Let me tell you something. We got a huge problem when it comes to value and values in this country. Like the same word, but we've got a problem with both of them because they have different meanings. We have a problem with values because I don't know if you all have been looking at me. Maybe I'm just old fashioned, but I see what's going on with our country and everything that's going on in the media. And I wonder like, where are the American values that we used to hold so dear? Like what happened to those? What happened to hard work? What happened to actually being someone like valuing yourself, being somebody who's a stand up citizen? And then I look at things like values, right? The things that we are paying for are not coming down. We just had the Federal Reserve meeting again today. And isn't it wonderful that we have somebody just like Jerome Powell to sit there and tell us that they've got inflation under control. I mean, thank you so much, Jerome Powell. I am so glad that groceries and housing and gas and energy and everything that myself and a common American buys I'm so glad that they're under control. Thank you so much, Jerome Powell. Now, let's get back to the whole values thing, right? Now, I don't know if you've ever heard of somebody named Ruby Rose. If you have, then you probably want to delete your search history or your browser history off your internet because uh, you probably got some things that you don't want other people seeing. But if you haven't, she's somebody who's an OF creator, right? I'm not going to say what that means, but you probably can put two and two together it's an adult website to where people make videos of themselves and people pay. So she had this guy and allegedly this guy spent over $60,000 in one month on her subscription or her videos or whatever. Now, I don't know where these people are getting this money from. I mean, maybe I'm doing something wrong. Maybe I shouldn't be here on YouTube. Maybe I should be selling 10 times the amount of houses I'm selling. But let me know, comment below, if you're the type of person who you have $60,000 just in one month to throw away on just seeing somebody's videos. Our values are completely out of line and at a time right now to where you have senior citizens are struggling to be able to pay for housing. You have senior citizens going homeless or having to move back in with family. And God forbid, like, I don't know if you all have seen, like, the price of senior living, but that has gone all the way through the roof. But, hey, looks like this is America. We don't have anything available for these seniors, and uh, they just better get lost or eat canned goods the rest of their lives. That is where our values are right now in the United States. Isn't that amazing that we've come this far? And, of course, we talk about housing a lot on this channel, and... Just another thing about our values is like, you know, I just read an article talking about the Chicago Housing Authority. Like they literally have hundreds of vacant homes that are not doing anything with. They're not giving them away to people. They don't have any programs able for, you know, people to rehab those homes. They're just sitting vacant. While we are in a housing crisis right now, there are over 50% of millennials that are still living at home with their parents. You have people that are going homeless every single day, but in a place like Chicago, right? They don't have any help for those people. They just have vacant units that are sitting available. And you know it's a shame. But before I get too far, you know what time it is. Drop the track. Now, the next part is like you have ultra rich Americans, right? Ultra rich Americans that actually have mansions that they've been trying to sell, but they can't sell them. And now they're renting them out to people for $150,000 a month. I mean, it must be nice to be able to rent something for $150,000 a month. Like, I can only imagine what kind of job somebody has to be able to, you know, rent a nice mansion out in LA for $150,000 a month. What's up guys, how y'all doing? All right, all right. $150,000 a month is what um, people in California, they have mansions, they're actually renting them out for. I mean, that's outrageous. Now, let's talk about home sales here. So, pending home sales, right, have dropped to the lowest rate since 2008. And now, if inflation's under control, as Jerome Powell says, 
the economy is doing so strong and jobs are going so well, why aren't people buying houses? Now I know here in a brand new neighborhood like this, these homes are beautiful. They're not really gonna have an issue selling these homes because everybody wants a brand new home and I get it. Like who doesn't want a brand new home just like this? They've got a pool in the neighborhood, great neighborhood, safe community. But on the flip side, why aren't people buying homes? I know that here in Metro Atlanta, took a look at the numbers for November, and November was just abysmal for home sales. In the 29 county region that my software tracks for like the entire Metro Atlanta area, in the 29 county region, there were only 4,700 homes sold. Just to put that in perspective, right? That is the worst month, the lowest amount of homes that have been sold in probably the last six or seven years at least. Isn't that cool right there? I'm gonna see if I can catch that plane. 30 years. So there's a hobby airport that's right around the corner here. But in the last six years, right, the lowest amount of homes sold last month. Only two months have been worse than that. That was January of this year, and I believe January of 2019. So if inflation is under control, if they're saying that these housing rates are coming down, then why aren't more people buying homes? And the next part, right? So the real estate industry is going to change as a whole, as we know it over the next couple of years, right? These real estate commission lawsuits are popping up everywhere. We've got another lawsuit that just popped up here in the state of Georgia essentially saying that sellers have been forced to subsidize buyer's agent commissions. Now, I'm not sure whether you heard of any of these lawsuits before, but here's my question. What do you think happens if you remove the incentive or the reward or the pay, however you want to describe it, from a buyer's agent when it comes to buying real estate? Now, on one hand, okay, you can say, well, if somebody wants to buy my house, follow the tools that are available with the internet, with Zillow, that they'll come on their own and my agent will just help them facilitate the process. And you know what? You're right on that end. But here's the other side of it, right? How is a consumer protected if they're working with somebody who's representing the seller? So there's nobody there to help them negotiate the right price. There's nobody there to help sure, to help make sure that they have the right repairs during the inspection. There's nobody to make sure that the consumer is protected at all. And do you think that ultimately this will cause housing prices to change up a little bit or a lot? Comment below. Because if there's nobody there to assist the buyer, you know, I can tell you this, right? Most of my business has been on the listing side, but I very often do work with buyers, especially people who sell their homes and are looking for new homes. And there's a lot of work that goes into helping somebody actually sort this whole process out, especially first time home buyers. So if there's nobody on that end, do you think that people are just gonna sit on the sidelines and not look for houses? And then what happens with showings, right? So right now here, like, you know, in the state of Georgia, I'm only gonna speak for Georgia because that's where I practice business. But if you wanna see a house, you have to have a licensed real estate professional go with you because the lock boxes are, have a special app that we use and only real estate professionals have access to it. The general public doesn't have access to it. So I think that, yes, there probably should be a lot more negotiation when it comes to commission. But if you shift 3% over to the buyer in terms of what they have to pay in addition to buying these houses, either the housing price is going to have to drop significantly or people just aren't going to buy houses. Because I know a lot of the buyers that I work with, they don't have an extra 3% laying around just to be able to facilitate a house purchase. Right? They don't have it. So if you're asking for that from them, you're not going to get it. And lastly, when it comes to new housing prices, they just reported that new home prices are down about 18% year over year. Now, I know that we have seen a huge uptick in the amount of inventory here, especially in Metro Atlanta. I mean, we have new homes being built almost everywhere. And even on the resale end, right, we have a 
ton of inventory that is just coming to the market and it is just sitting. Houses are taking like a lot longer to sell than they normally did. Like in 2021, throw it on the market, you're gonna get it sold on the weekend, right? Fast forward to 2023, these houses are just piling up and piling up and piling up to where right now here in Metro Atlanta, we have about 16,000 homes available for sale right now where the low was like, what, like 6,500? So we still haven't seen substantial movement in price, but we've seen an explosion in the amount of inventory that's available, especially new home inventory. And right now, builders are seeing that home prices have dropped 18 percent year over year now there are a lot of people that have been debating me in the comments online saying that housing is never ever going to drop so you comment below and let me know what happens or what's going to happen next new home prices are down 18 percent year over year more resale inventory is already here is already stuck on the market and prices have been cut by sellers at almost a record rate. What you think is gonna happen next? Are the values right? Peace.